vi raccontiamo una bella storia. We want to tell you a really nice story. The Italian American Museum has given us great support in restoring a shattered sculpture that was preserved in the castle in L'Aquila, a Spanish fortress. One of the most admired sculptures, very fragile, which had already been damaged on other occasions. In fact, the restoration has been really complex because of these previous events. The enterprise at the beginning seemed almost impossible to accomplish. But now that we've made it, we are very proud of it. All possible fragments have been recovered from the remains of the National Museum of Abruzzo, where the work of art was kept. There were 19 larger parts and five smaller, amongst which the biggest intact pieces were the throne and the legs and eight main parts of the bust, alongside other tiny fragments. There have been two objectives in this conservation process. On one hand, to reconstruct the fragmented work of art with the most advanced procedures. On the other hand, to return it to the community for its historical value and sense of belonging to this environment. So not only to restore the object, but the memory of its context. This project has therefore been a part of the rebuilding process following the earthquake's terrible damage. You will witness the use of modern technology and cooperation between specialized professionals. Before starting the work, an estimate was made of the entity of the damage on the image. What had we definitely lost of the sculpture and which parts would now prevent us from perceiving the original shape? Then, we established the fragment's state of preservation. We collected all possible information on the making of this work of art, which techniques and materials were used to create the piece. We studied previous restoration processes that transformed the sculpture during its history. Having considered all these aspects, it was possible to define the aim of our project and to indicate the most appropriate procedures to use and the necessary restoration work to apply. This project has been carried out by a team of different professionals, each contributing to the process with their specific knowledge. We chose to use traditional techniques and materials supported by advanced technology. The first stage of the work involved studying all fragments to find junctures. A long process requiring the patients to re-establish the positioning, especially of the smaller parts, of the terracotta chips belonging to the inner part, and the many remaining miniature slivers of colour. At this stage, we glued the smaller fragments together still leaving aside the ones needing support due to their weight and shape. Beforehand, we consolidated each part to avoid it crumbling further during the work. We tried various positions to find the matching points, slowly rebuilding the original structure, especially for the part of the bust that stems from the throne. The repositioning of the parts of the throne itself was easier. 
alongside those belonging to the mantle over the legs. On the other hand, the complexity of shape in the fragments from the bust made it necessary to support manual work with virtual reconstruction. For the 3D acquisition, we laser scanned every single fragment. Only excluding the really tiny ones, smaller than a cubic centimeter. This way, with detailed photographs of all portions, we built a first complete three dimensional full relief model. We studied archive pictures to confirm that the sculpture had been restored more than once. In 1935, the throne had been rebuilt almost entirely, also the legs, nose and lap, from which the child had been removed before 1935. Through the process, we realized we could better these previous reconstructions and that it was necessary to restore the sculpture's correct position. After various virtual reconstructions, we established a different inclination for the bust and a better positioning for the whole sculpture. We kept the plaster remodelings from 1935, but revising their style in line with the original. A patient work of chiselling and refilling have been necessary, while constantly monitoring the general alignment of the sculpture. We also used the three-dimensional models to measure the missing parts we manually created. Objective measurements of the original elements were possible thanks to various sections along the three axes and to alter graphic images from different angles. The statue's left hand has been remade using the right original one as a model. The sculptor modelled it in clay considering the percentage of shrinkage terracotta undergoes as a result of the baking process. For the parts in terracotta, particular attention was given to the colour obtained by varying the temperature during the baking of it, in order to create pieces chromatically as close as possible to the original. The baking of the reconstructed hand took place in Castelli, in the rare antique 16th century oven for pottery that still exists in Abruzzo. Master Vincenzo de Simone illustrated the operating of the so-called Arespiro oven, which takes its name from the use of alternating flame. The oven consists of two big masonry rooms, the underneath one for combustion and the above smaller one for the baking of the manufacts. We also went to Pietranico, our statue's town of origin to explore its memory, ancient and contemporary values. We visited the worship areas, met and interviewed the inhabitants about their memories of the sculpture and devotional tradition. The elderly, the people who can still remember the statue when it was in its church. Going back to our work, the cleaning of the statue has been a very important phase to recuperate the original polychromy that had been previously covered by repaintings. The face had been darkened, hiding its authentic colour. Actually, the original colour of the face had been scraped all over and only the area around the eyes and few scattered fragments of red pigment in the lips have survived. We discovered a decorative gilding on the blue mantle, unfortunately very fragmented, 
but so precious we could imagine the mantle painted with as you write originally decorated with metal plating. We analysed the gilding in the lab. It's a sample area on the mantle and through the stratigraphic analysis we found 16 layers of which 11 can be reconducted to previous restoring. The cleaning process was useful both to remove dirt and previous layers and to reveal the original colour and decoration. The Madonna's red garment presented decorations in silver plate covered in red lacquer, a transparent pigment similar to enamel. Although this residual material is not sufficient to precisely understand how the painted garments were decorated, these studies show how refined the original must have been and a variety of colours. For the cleaning of this part of the throne, we utilised mechanical means, as scalpels and miniature chisels. The same on the back. The stratigraphic cleaning reveals how the thick layer of chalky mortar applied in 1935 has been since twice covered with a shade imitating the colour of terracotta. This part of the throne was held together by an iron structure. We repeatedly consolidated the traces of colour found so as not to risk losing them during the cleaning. Aside from the supporting structure, wires emerged, holding together a filling of clay and bricks. As we freed the sculpture from these layers, we were able to understand how to restore the original shape. In the leg part, the oxidation of another supporting pin had visibly damaged the terracotta. So we substituted it with a fiberglass pin. Now, the main issue was creating a system to keep the fragments of the head and bust together, and it wasn't easy. It needed not to be visible and to support the weight and adapt to the complex shape of the parts. We decided to create two different supports, one for the head and one for the bust, and by using the 3D models we could use the inner side of the fragments. The head support consists of two caps that guarantee support and contact with the cavities through an expansion system. We created support elements with rapid prototyping technology. We placed the fragments on these new elements to verify the perfect adherence of the surfaces. Before gluing them to their new inner sole, the fragments were treated and consolidated with another resin that would also allow easy removal for future needs. We manually fixed the support at the base of the throne with two brass reversible pins. We glued the fragments to the new support gradually, one piece at a time, applying the adhesive only to certain points of contact. After propping the bust, we completed the reconstruction of the connecting parts while defining the details. Finally, we stuccoed the surfaces that needed in-painting. While for the other most extensive areas impossible to reconstruct, we created a specific mortar with pounded potsherd applied below the level of the original layers. Then, we made the pivot connecting the head with a steel rod forged so as to be correctly inclined. We have documented each stage of the work alongside the technical details regarding the statue and its preservation. 
The pictorial reintegration has been done with watercolour, faithful to the original, without wanting to create a reconstruction. We rebalance the colour with subsequent glazings. Only in this advanced stage of the work did we realise to what extent it was necessary to reconstruct, what was vital to restore to find the original image, work on the details of some of the folds, the nose, the right hand's lost fingers, to return to prayer. Di te vicino a me 